from Oasis of Faith Christian Center in Hesperia, California. Welcome to the Oasis of Faith with pastor and teacher, Daryl Harrelson. Welcome to the Oasis of Faith. Let's turn in our Bibles, if you would please, this morning to the book of Galatians once again, Galatians chapter 3. And as you're turning there, if you would say this after me, say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. And I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Last Sunday we began a new series that we're, talk, we're teaching on entitled the healing or uh, the healing word of God and we're talking about we're going to be teaching on healing throughout this this series and this is a series that the Lord gave me I've taught on healing over the years but this is a particular new series that he's given me and there's going to be some new things that I've that I'll be saying in this that I've never said before as the Lord's given it to me but I believe that it's God's will now, I'm going to say this publicly and some people may get offended by it some may not but but I believe that it's God's will for every person, and especially in the body of Christ, to be healed. Amen. I believe that. When you look at the ministry of Jesus, the three and a half years while he ministered on the earth, you have to understand something, that while he ministered, he was still ministering and operating under the old covenant dispensation. That's right. No one who got healed under his ministry was born again. That's right. They couldn't have been because he hadn't died yet for them. He hadn't paid the price for them. But yet they came to him, those that were sick and oppressed of the devil, and the Bible said he healed them all. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. Later on, the Bible says that he even anointed his disciples to go out. And he told them to lay hands on the sick. Yeah. And the Bible said they went about healing all who were oppressed of the devil. They went out. And the Bible said they came back to him in Luke chapter 10, and they said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. That's right. And he said, that's wonderful. He says, but what you really need to be rejoicing about is the fact that your name is written in heaven. That's it. And I trust your name is written in heaven this morning. Amen. 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 But I told you last week in closing that as we look here in Galatians chapter 3, Paul tells us that you and I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. And I pointed out to you the fact that the curse of the law was and is threefold. The curse of the law is sickness, poverty, and death, spiritual death. It's threefold. It can all be found in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Well, Pastor, I'm a New Testament Christian. No, you're a wannabe. Want to be what? You're a wannabe Christian. I am a Bible believing Christian from Genesis to Revelation. You can't pick and choose what you want to believe and what you don't. You either believe the Bible or you don't. Amen? But Deuteronomy chapter 28 tells us it talks about the blessing and it talks about the curse of the law. But now, here, Paul talks about it and he says that we've been redeemed. Did you get to Galatians? Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Paul says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, if the curse of the law wasn't important, why did the Lord have the Apostle Paul talk about it in the New Covenant? If it's only Old Covenant, why is he dealing with it in the New Covenant? Because he wants the church to understand that we've been redeemed from it. And we dealt with the word redeemed, and I may, I may deal with it again. But he said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, I told you the word redeemed there, it means, it's the Greek word, and I'll try to pronounce it again. It's the Greek word, ex ag or adzo. Okay, I'm not, a, I'm not a Greek scholar, but anywho, I know how to look up the words and I know how to find out what they mean, but I'm not very good at pronouncing them. 
And it means to buy up, to ransom, to rescue from loss, to save, to justify, to vindicate, to retrieve, to regain, to recover, to reclaim, and I like the last part, to repossess. That's what being redeemed means. Amen. See, the church is, we, we, see, we don't need, the body of Christ doesn't need to pos possess anything per se. We need to repossess yeah. what the devil has stolen from us. That's right. yeah. And throughout the body of Christ, you will find out, and when you look around the world, one thing you will find out for sure is this. There is no shortage of sickness and disease. That's right. And if you want some, all you got to do is go to the doctor and they'll give you all you want. That's right. Right. Amen. Amen. There's no shortage of it, but it's not a blessing. No. Sickness and disease is not a blessing. Oh, no. No. And the Bible says you and I have been redeemed from it. Say, I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed. from sickness, from sickness. Poverty, poverty, and death. And death. Okay? <clears throat> so, we left off last time talking about the fact that as long as we walk in God's redemptive plan, the curse of the law has no power over us. Amen. Now that's a spiritual truth you can write down and you can take to the bank. Well, pastor, that's, I, I, I can't accept that because I know Christians that are sick. So do I. Yeah. I, do, I, know, I know Christians that are sick, but just because they're sick doesn't make the Bible a lie. That's right. Well, I wanna, I'm going to deal with this this morning as to why some people are sick. Christians. You with me? Yeah. We're going we're gonna to deal with this issue. Why? Because it's my assignment to teach you what the Word says. That's right. It's your assignment to believe it. That's right. I can't make you believe the Bible. And I've learned after 42 years uh, as a Christian, I've learned over the years that not everybody that says they're Christians really believes everything in the book. That's, right. That's the way it is. Amen. So go over to Psalm 97. And while you're turning to Psalm 97... Go ahead and turn to Proverbs chapter 8 as well because I want to look at two scriptures that we're going to deal with this morning. Because you have a covenant right as a child of God to live free from sickness and disease. And this is one of the reasons why we started these healing services is because the Lord told me that most churches nowadays don't even teach on healing, let alone believe in it. And he said, I'm tired of seeing my people sick. And he says, I want you to hold these services so you can get them healed. Teach them the word for a few minutes, then begin to lay hands on them. And he says, and let my healing power touch them and heal them. And so we started last year. And our, our next service is coming up in September. And I'm just believing God for a mighty move of the spirit. Amen. People are going to be healed, delivered, set free. And you say, well, well, well why, why did the Lord pick you? Because I believe in healing. Yeah. Well, why do you believe in healing? Because he's healed me. That's right. He's healed my wife, healed my family, healed people that I know. Mm -hmm. and, but more important than anything else, his word says. Word. Right. And I believe his word. Did you find Psalm 97? Yeah. All right, now look at verse 10. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a point as we look at these, these two verses together. We're going we're gonna to put them together. David says here in verse 10, he says, you who love the Lord. What's the next words? Hate, hate what? Evil. Underline hate evil. You who love the Lord. Yeah, he's given us some instruction here. You who love the Lord hate evil. Amen. Say, I need to, I need to hate, evil. hate evil. Question, is sickness and disease a blessing or a curse? Is it good or is it evil? evil? Evil. All right. So then if sickness and disease is evil, then we're to hate it. Amen. But I know some Christians who want to hang on to it. <laughs> right. Do you know why they want to hang on to it? Because they get attention. Yeah. They get people calling them on the phone. Oh, uh, honey, I just want to let you know. I just feel so sorry for you. I just don't know why you're going through what you're going through. Yeah. Giving you sympathy will kill you. But if I can get you to believe the word of God, I can, we can get you healed. That's right. Amen. But through the word of God and through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not me. We're not, I'm not the healer. 
But the word is, That's right. Jesus. the Bible said he sent the word and he healed them. Yeah. And Jesus was the word. We read that last week. He was the word. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. So we could say this, that sickness and disease is satanic oppression. All sickness and disease, I hope, I hope you grab hold of this. All sickness and disease is, is this. It is perfect health perverted. All perverted means is it's twisted. You ever seen a piece of uh, wicker furniture? You, you know how they make wicker furniture? You see the, it's the, 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 the stuff they use is twisted. Well, that's what wicked means. It means it's twisted. That's where, that's where we get the word for wicker, because it's wicked. It's, it's twisted. Sickness and disease is God's perfect health perverted or twisted. The devil has never created anything but confusion. All poverty and lack is, is prosperity perverted. That's all poverty and lack is. It's, it's just prosperity perverted, twisted. That's all it is. But God's will is for you to be in health. Third John 2. Beloved, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. Well, he's talking about soulish prosperity. No, he's covering them all. Prosperity means material. Be in health, that's physical. And as your soul prospers, he's talking, that's mental prosperity. Because there's some people that aren't prospering mentally. So now, David said, you who love the Lord, do what? Hate evil. Say hate evil. He said, he preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. But the first part that I really want to just fix in on is, you who love the Lord, hate evil. Say, that's my assignment. See, whatever God hates is what you and I should hate. Amen. And whatever God loves, that's what we should love. Amen. So let me ask you a question. Does God hate sin? Yes. Then we ought to hate sin. Right. Does God hate sickness and disease? Yes. Then we ought to hate sickness and disease. Yes. Does God hate poverty and lack? Yes, he does. Then we should hate poverty and lack. Amen. These are just to name a few. These are just some things. Okay. All right. You, you got your finger over Proverbs 2? Proverbs chapter 8, rather? All right, look at, the, look at verse 13 and look what he says here. He says, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is to what? Wait, wait, the fear of the Lord is to what? Hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth, he says, do I hate? So once again, notice we're to love what God loves and to hate what God hates. So this is why, me personally now, I have, to, I have to say it this way. Me personally, there are some things that I hate. No people. I love people. I love all people. Don't care who they are. I love them. But I hate some things. I hate sin. I hate sickness and disease. I detest it. I hate poverty and lack. I hate seeing people go without when I know God has something better for them. I hate, I hate there are certain things I, just, I hate. I hate evil. And I hate the devil. Oh, pastor, come on. You really, you really believe in that old archaic idea of the devil? You don't? Well, the devil is just a figment of your imagination. Well, he's got you deceived. Jesus talked about the devil. He believes in him. So if he believes in him, I better believe in him too then. Am I right? Am I telling the truth? So notice in both of these verses, he says we're to hate evil. And like I said, sickness and disease is evil. It's a perversion of the devil. So now my question is this. Why then are so many Christians accepting, tolerating in their lives the things in which God hates? Right. 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 Come on. Do you ever think about that? 
Yeah. Just stop for a minute. Just, just do some deductive reasoning for a moment. Wait a minute. If God hates sickness and disease, why then am I allowing it in my physical body? The answer? The number one answer. Ignorance. People allow certain things in their lives through ignorance. Ignorance is not a bad word. All ignorance means is they're unaware. Most Christians, it's sad to say, have not taken the time to open their Bible to get in it and find out what is rightfully theirs, what rightfully belongs to them, what they can have. This is one of the things why I, I just enforce this here at this church. You got to find out who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, what you can do in Christ. You find out those things, you'll be a changed person. That's right. See, you'll quit listening to these preachers that tell you, well, you're just an old sinner saved by grace. You can't be both. Either you're a sinner or you're saved by grace. Which one are you? Come on. Well, you're telling me you don't sin? That's what, exactly what I'm telling you. I didn't say I didn't make mistakes. But I don't practice sin as a lifestyle. When I was in the world before I got born again, I didn't even have to think about sin. I did it because that was my nature. That's right. I woke up in the morning sinning. Yep. But once I came to Jesus Christ, I don't wake up in the morning sinning now. That's right. As a matter of fact, when something comes at me, and, I, and the Lord always, through the Holy Spirit, He reminds me, ah, 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 you right. shouldn't do that. And now you do that as well, don't you? That's right. That's right. See, why? Because I hate sin. Didn't say I was perfect, but I'm not a sinner. I am saved by grace, but now I don't practice sin as a lifestyle. That's right. Amen? You cannot be both. Now, I know there's, a, there's some things going out on in the world right now where they're telling people they can be whatever they want to be. Come on. Come on. And if you don't like what you are, you can get it changed. <laughs> right. Doesn't make it true. That's right. That's right. The word is final authority. Yeah. Are, are you still with me? So the answer is ignorance of God's word. How do you know that, Pastor? Because Hosea 4, 6 says, God says through the prophet Hosea, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now notice how he said that. And I don't care what translation you're reading from, I'm going to quote it the right way. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. He didn't say they perish. He said they're destroyed. And there's a big difference between perishing and being destroyed. Fruit in the grocery store and then eventually gets in your, in your refrigerator, it will perish. Yeah. But being destroyed is totally different than perishing. Yeah. Perishing is a slow process. Yeah. Destroyed means annihilation. Yeah. And God's people are being destroyed today through ignorance of God's word because they won't take the time to get into it. Yeah. See, and I'm not talking about reading a verse a day. That's not getting into the word. I'm not, I'm not talking about praying five minutes a day. That's not spending time with God. I'm talking about setting things aside, getting things out of your way and out of your life where you sit down and you're praying on a regular basis. You're studying the word on a regular basis as well as reading the Bible on a regular basis. There's a big difference between studying and reading. You know that. You know that. Okay. This is what's got to be done. But ignorance of God's word will destroy a person. It will get them to the point to where they'll begin to tolerate and accept poverty, yeah. sickness and disease, and even, well, I'll even go you one, dying prematurely. Yeah. Man, man. Dying before their, their God-given time. Now, you may not want to live. Listen, you may not want to live to be 120 years old. I do. Yeah. No, I do. Because that's my promise. God promised his children 120 years. Now, if you don't want to live to be 120, punch your ticket. You don't want to stay? Go. Just don't get in my way. Don't try to block me from, from receiving my blessing. You understand what I'm saying? See, well, but I don't believe in healing. Okay, fine. You stay sick, I'll stay well. Let's don't argue about it. You stay broke. I don't believe in prosperity. Then stay broke and I'll stay rich. That's right. Man. How hard is that? Come on. Ignorance of God's word will destroy a person. That's right. This is why he says, 
my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So the number one reason why people, even, even, even Christians now, why that they're accepting sickness and disease in their body is because of ignorance of God's word. That's right. yeah. Ignorance of who they are. Ignorance of what they can have. Ignorance of what they can do. See, if you don't, if you don't know something, you just don't know it. That's right. That's right. There's some things, I'm just being honest with you, there's some things I just don't know. Do you know why I don't know them? I haven't taken the time to study them out. I don't have the slightest idea in the world how to go into an operating room and perform brain surgery. I've never done it. So therefore, you will never engage me in that kind of a conversation. What am I going to tell you? And what are you going to tell me? If you're a doctor and you're, you're trying to explain brain surgery to, to me and I don't know the difference between a vein and a vessel. <laughs> no, really. What, 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 what is that going to do? No, I have to. If I really want to learn that, i got to get into it and find out how it functions and operates. I'm not an automobile mechanic. Oh, now, I understand how the internal combustion engine works. I, I, I grab that. But for me to listen to a car, like some of these guys that, that work on cars all the time, they can say, oh, yeah, you hear that rod knocking? Oh, that was me just tapping on the floor. <laughs> hey, well, you know, you, you got some bad lifters in there. Well, I don't know the difference between a lifter and a rod. <laughs> Why? Because I never, I never got into auto mechanics. I never, it never got my attention. My brother used to get all over me all the time. Why don't you work on your own car? I said, tell you what, let you, I said, let's just, you do yourself a favor and I'll do mine. I said, you work on cars and I'll flip hamburgers. Yeah, right. We'll just stay in loving Jesus. Hey, but you don't even change your own oil. I don't want to get dirty. Yeah. Well, you can go to the parts house and you can, get, you can get your oil and filter and do it yourself. I probably can. But I got a mechanic who's two doors down from me and that's what he does. Am I right, Dean? We went to the same mechanic. <laughs> so there's some things you will never engage me in a conversation. But when it comes to the things of God, now, 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 now you're in my ballpark. We can talk about the Bible now. Do you, are you still with me or did you go home? All right. So now let's go to Matthew's Gospel, Chapter 8. And I want to continue looking at what the Word of God has to say about sickness and disease and about healing. Because God wants you healed in your physical body. God does, want, does not want you walking around with sickness and disease in your body. That's why he's provided Jesus Christ for you and I, because we're going to find out what the Bible says here. How many of you believe, believe the Bible this morning? Raise your hand if you believe the Bible. All right, so you believe the Bible. So if the Bible says it, what, do you, what are you going to do after you read the Bible and, and, and you see what it says? You're going to believe it? Yeah. Or are you going to throw it in the trash? You're either going to believe it or you're going to cast it aside. And it's sad to say too many Christians, they, they, even when they do read the Bible, they say, well, you know, but I wasn't taught that way. Well, you're going to, you're going to believe Grandma or Jesus? Come on. I care what Grandma told you. That's right. Or Uncle Harry. I don't care what Uncle Harry told you. You're going to believe what Jesus said or Uncle Harry? That's right. Well, but, but yeah, but we're, we're this denomination and we don't believe that. Well, you made it go to hell that denomination too then. That's right. Denomination, nothing. Denominations have caused more confusion in the body of Christ than anything else. We believe this and don't believe that. Why don't you just throw your Bible in the trash? You don't believe anything anyway. Matthew chapter 8, you there? Pastor, you're just too hard. No, it's time. Remember what I told you last Sunday? I am passionate about this. And sometimes I'm so passionate that it almost sounds like I'm angry. I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at the devil. Mm -hmm. I'm angry at, at sickness and disease. I hate sickness. I'm angry at poverty and lack. I see people going around doing without when they, I know they can have better. I see them going around sick, and I know they can be well. And so I, I'm, 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 I'm passionate about this. And I guess I just want everybody else to be passionate too. So when I get a little, I'm not angry at you, trust me. I'm angry at the devil. Did you find Matthew chapter 8? Mm -hmm. Now look at verse 14. 
Now, before we get started, does anybody, you're looking at your Bible right now? Yes. Does anybody see my name next to that verse? No. So I didn't write it. I can't take any credit for it. This is in the B-I-B-L-E. Verse 14. And when Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw his mother's wife laid and sick of a fever. Did you catch that? Yes. This is Peter's mother-in-law. She was sick of a fever. And he touched her hand. And the fever did what? What did the fever do? Stop. Stop. Do you believe that it was the will of God for the fever to leave her? You believe that was the will of God? So you believe when Jesus touched her hand that he was doing the will of God? And Jesus was in the will of God? Then why do so many Christians want to get out of the will of God? Lord, if it be thy will, heal me. You're a fool. What do you mean if it's God's will? We just read right here. You answered the question. It must have been his will because if Jesus healed her and it wasn't God's will, then Jesus was out of the will of God. Am I telling the truth? He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she arose. What'd she do? She arose. And what'd she do next? She ministered them where she served them. One translation says she got up and cooked them dinner. Verse 16, when the evening came, they brought unto him many who, who were possessed with what? Devils. Devils. And he cast out the spirits with what? Word. Say there's healing in the word. In the word. Say the word, of God the word of God will remove demons. Will remove demons. The, word God the word of God will heal the sick. Heal the, sick. The, word of God the word of God will change your finances. Change your finances. The word of God We'll get rid of sin. The word of God will. Hmm. He cast out the spirits with his word. Did it stop there? And he healed how many? Wait a minute. He healed what? He, wait, 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 wait. He healed how many? All. Somebody help me. What does all mean? Nobody left out? How dare some dumb preacher say, well, sometimes it's God's will to heal this person and sometimes it's God's will to only heal that person because you never know what God will do. You will if you read his word. See, that's a bunch of religion. He healed them all. So you know what else that tells me? God is no respecter of person. He doesn't play favorites. If he healed them all, he healed them all. Why? Because evidently he wanted all to be healed. That's right. Now you have to go to Bible school to misunderstand this. Or pay a preacher to help you misunderstand this. And that's what the church has done. Uh, Charles Capps, I used to love Brother Capps when he was still alive. He said, folks, he said, we paid preachers to help us misunderstand the Bible. It's this is so simple. The Bible says a kid can get this. Amen. A child can get this. Why can't we? Are we children? Actually, it says a fool can get it. Amen. None of us are fools, are we? And we're not children, are we? No. So if a fool and a child can get it, you know there's hope for us. Right. Verse 17. Now watch this. He healed all who were sick. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, now what did Isaiah say? Himself, Jesus, took our infirmities, and he bare our what? Did you catch that? Now we looked at this a little bit last week, but look at it again. Mm -hmm. Himself took your infirmities, and he bare your sicknesses. So if Jesus took your infirmities and he bare your sicknesses, that means he's got them and you don't. But you don't understand, Pastor. The doctor says I have this. What are you doing with it? 
You accepted it somehow. You took it back. Jesus took it from you, but somewhere along the line, you went over and snatched it out of his hands and took it back. Well, what did I do? I don't, I don't know what you did, but you did it. <sighs> You're just too cruel. You're just too mean. You're just too hard. You want me to lie to you? I'm not going to lie to you. Now, what did it say? Himself what? Himself what? Took our infirmities and what? Bore our what? Is that a lie or is that truth? You going to believe this or what somebody else told you? So when the devil tries to come at you and put sickness on you, what do you do? You resist. No, devil, in the name of Jesus. Jesus took my infirmities. He bore my sicknesses. I know you want me to take it, but I'm not taking it. I refuse it in Jesus' name. Well, how do I do that? The same way when the UPS man comes to your door and he brings you a package that's not yours? You, you're not going to get it until you sign for the package. You've got to quit signing for the package you don't want. Amen. That's right. I, and I told you this last week. I think I'm taking a cold. I think I'm taking the flu. People got mad at me over COVID because I refused to. I, I, I didn't participate in it. You didn't get COVID. Nope, you didn't get COVID. Ain't going to get COVID. I refuse. Why? It can, I, I confess this over my body every day. No sickness, no disease, no germ, no virus can live in, dwell in, or take up residence in my body. I don't care what you call it because they're going, they're going to bring it out again. Get ready. They're just going to change the name a little bit different. Get ready. They're, they're already planning for it. They're going to call it something else. And when it comes again, guess what? Some of these Have you ever noticed some of these people driving around in the cars by themselves and they're still wearing masks? Right. You talk about goofy. And I, I, I see him drive down the street and I think, dear God, who are you going to give it to? If you got it, well, I ain't got it. Well, who are, you, who are you going to get it from? There's nobody in the car with you. You're in the car by yourself. You ain't going to give it to nobody and can't get it from anybody because you're in the car by yourself. And yet you've got your mask on. Why? Because they don't know. I had people get mad at me in this church because I didn't make people wear masks. And I made it very clear. I made it very public. If you want to wear a mask, wear it. Wear it. But don't get mad at those who didn't or don't wear it. Amen. Well, you got to make the people wear it. I can't make anybody do any. I can't make you come to church. How am I going to make somebody wear a mask? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Dear God in heaven, I wish people would wake up. Right. Am I telling the truth? That's right. yep. Well, you need to make them. No, you need to mind your own business. That's right. I'll pastor the church. I'll do what God tells me to do. Yeah. Well, you better tell them to wear a mask or I'll quit coming to church. Right. There's the door. Well, there's, there's one there. There's one there. Yep, sir. Right. Knock yourself out. And they both swing out. Yeah. Oh, you're just too hard. You're just too hard. No, because you know what? I've said this for years. People will either love me or they'll hate me. But I promise you, they will know why. They'll know why. Because I, I ain't here to play games. I'm not here to play church. We got too many people doing that already. Yeah. Amen. I'm not here to play church. I believe God's word. His word says it. I believe it. And that settles it. There's, there's no argument. There's no room for discussion now. That's it. I believe it. Amen. Amen. So notice Jesus took our infirmities. He bore our sicknesses. And this is why the believer now, as we as believers, we need to learn to read the Bible with a personal identification. Make the Bible personal. So when you open it up, it's God talking directly to you. See, what we do is in, in, in church, you know what we do? They, we read a scripture and say, yeah, that's for brother so-and-so. Well, you know what? Sister so-and-so needs to hear that. Well, what about you? No, when I read this book, he's talking to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've told you this, man, I'll tell you. The Bible says whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Yeah. 
He chastens. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll be at home in, the, in my office studying or reading or something, and, and my wife will be at the other end of the house, and I'll come around. I said, God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. She said, what do you, what'd you do now? I said, he corrected me. Well, why are you getting, why, why are you getting excited about that? He loves me. Amen. Whom the Lord loves, he, he chastens. He corrects. If God didn't correct me, he wouldn't love me. Right. Would you like to be corrected? When I need to be corrected, yes. I mean, come on, just, just be honest. Nobody likes correction. Nobody, I mean, come on, children, do they like correction? But why do you correct them? Because you love them. God loves you and I. You still with me? So if Jesus took our infirmities, if he bore our sicknesses, that means, like I said, he has them and you don't. So the question that I have to ask those who are in need of healing is, if Jesus took your infirmities and bore your sicknesses, what are you doing with them? Why do you have them if, he's, if he took them? What are you doing with it? I've said this, and people, they, and I don't say this to, to get a laugh or to joke, but see, sickness and disease to some Christians, it's like their, their pet. It's like their little, you know, their little kitty cat or their little puppy. My, my heart disease, my arthritis, my diabetes, my cancer, my, every time you say my, you're claiming it. No, you claimed it. When you said my, you claimed it. It's not yours. It's the devil's. I'm not, I'm not taking nothing from that sucker. No. If he's offering it, I ain't buying. Amen. But many times they, they look at me, people look at me, you know, and, you know when I say these things, and the, they look at me for a minute like the light comes on. Oh, oh, wow, you know, that got my attention. Then they begin to realize that Jesus paid the price for you to live free from sickness and disease. And they don't have to be sick. And they go, wait a minute, I don't have to be sick? No, you don't have to be sick. You can, but you don't have to. Go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Or 13, rather. Did I say 3? Three? 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, we've read enough scriptures now to prove, and we're not done, but we've read some scriptures enough to prove that God does not want you sick. See, so then people say, well, why do you care if people are sick or not? Because I want what God wants. Amen. God wants people well, and if I have the heart of God and the love of God, I want people to be well. That's right. I don't want people to be sick. Well, the Lord is trying to teach me something. What'd you learn? Well, he's teaching me how to be a good Christian. No, now you just lied. He wants me to be a better Christian. No, you lied again. Well, why is that? If you really wanted to be a better Christian and you believe God put sickness on you so you'd be a better Christian, you'd pray and ask God to find all the sickness he could find and put it all on you so you could be the best Christian. That's right. That's right. That's right. I don't like sickness. I don't want it. I'm not accepting it. Amen. And I'm not in any competition to be the best Christian. That's right. That's right. I'm going to do what I know to do according to the word of God and live the best way I know how according to the word of God. And stand on his word. And if I do what the word says, I can come out victorious. Right. And if I, if I don't do what the word says, then guess what? I'm going to get my behind kicked. Amen. That's, right. That's what's happened to a lot of Christians. Their behind's yeah. being kicked because they really don't believe the Bible. Amen. Did, I, I told you for 2 Corinthians 13. Are you there? Yeah. Look at verse 1. Look what Paul says. He says, this is the third time, talking to the church of Corinth. This is the third time I'm coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So when you go around saying, I'm taking the flu, I'm taking a cold, I'm I think I'm getting sick, I better go to the doctor because I think I have this. When you tell somebody else that, that's one witness. Then the person you spoke it to, when they get in agreement with you, now that's two witnesses. 
So now you and that person are in agreement, and the Bible says in the mouth of two or three. And chances are, by the time you got through, through the day, you've called ten people. Guess what I'm going through? Guess what I've got? I went to the doctor to get, guess what the doctor told me I had? I'm not going to guess. Because it doesn't matter what the doctor says you have. And if you go get diagnosed, praise God, now you know how to pray. Amen. That's, see, if you, listen to me. I am not opposed to doctors. Matter of fact, doctors have kept some of you alive. I thank God for doctors. I thank God for medicine, medical science. I thank God for it. But they cannot heal you, period. And if they're a true doctor and an honest doctor, they will even tell you, they cannot heal you. All doctors can do is treat you. There's only one healer, and he's the one who created everything about you from head to toe. He created the skin. He created the fingernails. He created the organs inside. He created the bones. He created everything. He knows how you function. Doctors, doctors can't grow out a leg or an arm. Doctors, they can, now they might be able to take an organ out of somebody else and transplant it into you. They can't grow you a new kidney or a new liver or a new heart. They can't grow you one. God can. I went to a church one time years ago. True story. I say that only because sometimes when you tell these things, people, they question you. I was attending this church, and there was a man in our church. This was even before I met Carla. There was a man in our church who was going in for open heart surgery. And so he came up, our pastor, you know, our church believed in healing. He, he came up for healing at the end of the service, and the pastor laid hands on him and prayed for him. And the uh, power of God hit him. I mean, you talk about, whew, man, he barely, barely laid his hands on the power of God hit him. He didn't just fall. He flew back and fell down. Well, he was going in the very next day for open heart surgery. But he wanted the pastor to pray for him before he went. He got into the hospital. They opened him up. Has anybody ever had open heart surgery? Jerry, did you have it? No. Has anybody ever had it? Who? Mike, you have it? They cut your rib cage open, do they not? They take a saw and they cut your chest open. All the way down. And they take your ribs, your rib cage, and they, they pull it open like this That's right. to go inside and they work on the heart. Yeah. Then afterwards, when they, when they do what they're going to do, then when they put you back together, they wire you together to hold the, the chest so, so it can grow and heal back together. They cut him open. They sawed him open. Doctor opened his rib cage up, and there was a brand new heart in there. Now, the doctor wasn't even a believer. And you know the first words out of his mouth? Oh, my God. He opened him up. He said, oh, my God, he's got a new heart. And they closed him back up and sent him home. Well, you know, did what they had to do. They kept him for a day or two. They didn't have to change it. They didn't have to put a, a new heart in there or do the transplant. He got a brand new heart. And I, we believe that it happened that morning when the power of God touched him and healed him. In that service, we believe it. So he never had open heart, or never never had a new heart put in. Pastor, you really believe that stuff? Oh, honey, let me tell you. If God created the heart that you have right now, why can't He give you a new one? What's it for Him to give you a new hip, or a new knee, or a new? I'm believing me personally. I'm believing God for two new eyes. Two new eyes. I want two brand new ones. I don't want just one. I want them both. And I don't want 2020 vision. I want 2015. I want to throw these suckers away once and for all. Amen. Amen. But I'm not moved by it. I've been prayed for. I remember when Brother Hagin came to town years ago. I was a, I was a new Christian. And Brother Hagin came. And you, you all know Brother Hagin, how he believed in, you know, and he laid hands on people, had a healing ministry. Brother Hagen laid, laid hands. Y'all remember David Dobler? Yeah. Remember David? He was an old piano player we had. He was, David was blind. And we went to the meeting together. He and I. I went and picked him up, and we drove to the meeting together. 
and we both stood in line together. I'm blind in one eye, he's blind in both. And Brother Hagin laid hands on us. Power of God hit us, we went down like bricks. Well, the, the, the manifestation of that healing hasn't come into fruition yet. But I'm not moved by that. Why? I just keep confessing what the word says. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. Well, what do you see? It doesn't matter what I see. I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. I hope you got that. I'm walking by faith. See, if I walk by sight, then I'm walking by my senses. No, I believe I'm healed. See, I see, me, me personally, I see better in the spirit than I do with these natural eyes. And I'm telling you, the spirit is a lot more real than what you see with these, these two doodads. Yeah. But you know, I've been blind since I was four years old, that right eye. But am I going to quit? Am I not going to believe the Bible just because the sight hasn't manifested? No. I, I don't want one eye. I want two. Two brand new ones. And she's already picked the color out. Blue. See, when we first met, I still had my eye, my, my, even though I was blind in the, in the right eye, it still had the full color and everything that, that, that the left was. And then over a period of time, I had to have some surgeries and stuff, and I had to detach retina and some other things that took place. And so it lost the, the color. And so, but we're believing for two, two beautiful brand new blue eyes. Amen. She always, that, that's what she fell in love with, was my, was my eyes. <laughs> With nothing else but those eyes. Where am I at? But the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So I just keep confessing I'm healed. When we talk to each other, she says, you're healed. And I talk to her, she's healed. We're healed. We, 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 can, we, can talk, we talk about this and confess this all the time. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I'm convinced that when she went through her trial with cancer, I'm convinced because we didn't tell anybody. We kept it to our, our immediate, and I said immediate family, and that was it. We didn't tell a soul in church. Because if we told people in church, she'd have been dead the next week. That's right. You hear about Sister Carla? She got cancer. She's going to die. Oh, yeah. That's how people are. We didn't tell anybody until after it was all finished. And then we shared. She, had a, she, she wore a wig for how long? People didn't know it. We went, we went to a place. They made her a special wig, dyed it the color of the way she wore her hair, cut it the way she wears it, et cetera. Nobody knew she had a wig on. Now, that's real now. She got, she got real hair now. <laughs> but when they put her on chemotherapy, she was as bald as I am. Oh, yeah. But you know what? We weren't moved by it. We kept confessing the word. Amen. Believing the word. 20 years later, she's healed from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Well, why do you always bring that up? Because you need to hear it. That's Faith right. comes by hearing. You need to know that God's word works. Right. i got to hurry up. I'm running out of time. So, you may have a runny nose. You may have a scratchy throat. You may have that, but you don't need to go tell everybody. You don't need to do that because all you're doing is speaking life to it. Proverbs 18, 21 says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yeah. Don't talk about it. Don't tell people about it because you, you tell people, then they're going to talk about it. Right. And that word will be established. Go over to Psalm 119 real quick. I got to hurry. Psalm 119. Are you getting anything out of this? Yeah. Look at verse 89. Psalm 108, uh, 19, verse 89. Now here again, I didn't write this. This is God's word. Psalm 119, verse 89. Are you there? Yeah. David says, forever, O Lord. How long? Forever, O oh Lord, forever. Yeah. Thy word, your word, That's right. is what? Settled. settled where? Forever. It's settled. Yeah. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. So now, listen to this. 
If God's word is settled in heaven, where are we? Where are we? No, where are we? We're on earth. If I'm now, correct me if I'm wrong. I'll give I'll give you this one time to correct me. In Matthew chapter six, when the disciples asked Jesus to teach us to pray, in what we refer to as the Lord's Prayer, you remember that? He said, "Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, or holy is your name. Your kingdom come." Your will be done where? On earth. On earth as it is where? Heaven. Stop right there. That's right. So ask me this, or answer me this question. Would it be safe then to say that God's will is for earth to be just like heaven? Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. So is there any sickness in heaven? No. Nope. Nope. Is there any sickness on the earth? Yeah. So I would say God's will is not being done on earth like it is in heaven. So if God's word is forever settled in heaven, then that tells me that his will is that his word is forever settled here on the earth. That's his will. That's his will. But why isn't his will being done? Because he can't get people to believe his word. If God can get people in church, forget about people outside these four walls, just for a minute, forget about them. If he can just get people inside these four walls to believe his word, that's a major breakthrough. That's a major breakthrough. But you know what we do? We listen to 25 different preachers. One preaches for healing. One preaches against it. One doesn't even pray. Just ask him. Some don't even pray. If they don't pray, how are they going to believe the Bible? Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Well, they're not asking because they're not praying. So how are they going to receive when they never do any asking? If they're not doing any asking, they're sure enough not doing any believing. And Jesus said, believe that you receive and you shall have. Well, they're not asking, so therefore they don't believe. And if they're not believing, they sure enough ain't receiving. That's right. That's right. That's just common sense, folks. I said a little while ago, a child can get this. A fool can get it. Why can't we? My goodness. So if God's word is forever settled in heaven, then it's got to be settled not only here on earth, but now you ready for this? It's got to be settled in your heart. I don't care what the preacher across town believes. I don't give a rip what he preaches and what he believes. I don't care. What does God's word say? God's word says it. I believe it. But, Pastor, you just don't understand. But our denomination doesn't, that's not in our our statement of faith. It's not in our doctrine. Throw it in the trash then. It's not a doctrine of faith. It's not a, it's not a, 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 what did I say, statement of faith. It's not their, 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 their doctrine. They don't have a doctrine. The only doctrine there is is the word of God. That's the only doctrine there is. I've had people ask me, what, what's your doctrine? I believe the Bible. That's right. Well, that's too simple. Hello? Yeah. You either believe it or you don't. You know, when people ask me, are you a man or a woman? I've never questioned it. <laughs> right. right. I've never had to stop and think, well, you know what? I'm, I, I was born a man or male, but, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I've never done that. Coming on 64 years, I've never done that, Paul. Have you? Have you ever done that? You better not. Uh (laughs) (laughs) You either believe the Bible or you don't. That's it. That's it. Well, it's always a well. No, that's a deep subject for a shallow mind. There you go. Come on. Where am I at? It's got to be established in your heart. The first thing most people do is they go and tell everybody else. They tell their husband. They tell their wife. I think I'm catching the flu. I think I'm getting a cold. I think this. You take a a young woman who's just been married for a short time, and her and her husband, they're they're planning on starting a family. huh? She goes to the doctor, and she 
she does she gets the little the little stick back and she's all excited oh doctor says I think you're gonna have a baby she didn't care about that stick she didn't care about a sheet of paper she never saw the baby yet she's never seen the fetus she's never seen the embryo she hasn't seen anything and what does she do? As she don't even wait to get home. She gets in the car, gets her cell phone, and she calls Mama. Mama, guess what? I'm going to have a baby. You ain't seen nothing yet. Well, if you can do that with a baby, why can't you believe God? And God, Because God gave you his word. See, you believe the doctor, but you won't believe God. That's right. Am I making sense? Help me, Jesus, I'm running out of time. So, when you say, I think I'm catching the flu, I think I'm getting a cold, I think this, I think, you have just released, you ready? You've just released faith into that sickness. You've released faith with your words. You release faith into the sickness. And you took it as yours my arthritis, my lumbago, my whatever. You signed for the package. You have got or you've just established the word of the devil and not the word of God. And remember what Jesus said, and i got to close. What Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, this is a law. Jesus said, you will have what you say. So if you don't want what you're having, quit saying it. Well, I just don't know. I, I, I don't know why I can't afford groceries this week. You said it. I don't know why I'm always broke. You said it. I don't know why I'm always sick. You said it. You're having what you say. Now, I know people get offended when I say that. Oh, a bless God. See, I can get away with it because I don't live with your husband or your wife. But you go home and try to tell that to your husband or your wife, and the fight's on. Who do you think you are telling me that? Well, that's what pastor said today. Yeah, he can say that, but you can't. Don't you say that to me. Because you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know how I feel. You just hurt my feelings. Well, your feelings need to be hurt, dummy. Your feelings need to be hurt because you're walking by your feelings and not by faith. Amen. Did you get anything out of that this morning? I got to stop. We trust the message has been a blessing to you. The announcer will give you more information how you can obtain an audio or a video of the message you just heard. Remember also that these broadcasts are made possible by the continued free will offerings of you, the viewers and listeners. And remember also that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. We trust that this message has been a blessing to you. If you would like to receive a copy of the message you have just heard, or if you would like more information about how you can receive a brochure with the list of all of Pastor Harrelson's teachings, then please call or write us. Our address is 17250 Lemon Street in Hesperia, California, 92345. Or you can call the ministry at area code 760-948-0745. Once again, our address is 17250 Lemon Street in Hesperia, California, 92345. Or you can call the ministry at area code 760-948-0745. Pastor Harrelson would like to invite you to come and join us in a live worship service. If you are visiting in or if you live in the high desert area, then please make plans now to be with us. Our address and times of services are on the screen. Remember that these television broadcasts are made possible by the continued free will offerings of you, the viewers and listeners. Remember, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord.